glad you're here. Uh, this is a webinar format. So if you're used to Zoom meetings, this is a little different. Uh, you will not be able to share your screen. Only the presenters can share their screen. Um, but you can still interact in a few different ways. You can use the chat. And there's a couple of different ways you can use the chat. You can send a message just to the panelists, which would be uh, myself and Jocelyn and a couple of uh, Him Society staff members who are in the background helping out. Uh, or you can send a chat to the panelists and all attendees. So if you want everyone to see your thought, make sure that you have that option, all panelists and attendees chosen in the chat. Um, a lot of times we get people sending things uh, just to the panelists and I, I think that they think everyone is seeing it. Uh, the other way you can interact is through the question and answer function. That's also down in your little min Zoom menu where you'll be able to see a couple of options to click on Q&A is where you can officially ask questions. We'll be monitoring both the Q&A and the chat for questions. So either way, we're gonna see uh, your question. And then the last way you can interact is through this nifty thing called polls. And those will pop up every now and then when I activate them. We have two polls for you today. Uh, I wanna know a little bit about you and and where you're coming from and, and why you're here. So here's the first poll. What is your role, title, or position? You can choose all that apply. This is multiple choice. So if you represent uh, a, a variety of these options, you can click all that apply. So let me know uh, who who's here. We got a lot of local church musicians. Jocelyn disappeared. <laughs> Don't go, Jocelyn. Wait, I'm going to introduce you soon. <laughs> All right, I'm going to give you another couple of seconds to respond to the poll. It should have popped up on your screen. Looks like we've got a wide range of folks. We've got some teachers. We've got some pastors. We've got some local, lots of local church musicians. Um, a wide variety of education, some current students. So glad you all are here. Some others, I'd be interested in, uh, maybe you can put in the chat what other uh, you are. Uh, maybe we've got some, some random folks who just are interested in learning what church musicians do on their free time. All right, so <laughs> here are the results of that first poll. Thanks for participating. All right. Now I'm going to do one more poll before I introduce Jocelyn. Once again, this is just to get to know a little bit about who's here. Are you a member of the Hymn Society? The answer could be yes. Oh, a music therapist. Someone uh, in what was the other category is a music therapy. That's that's wonderful. What a what a great field to be in. A hymn writer. Oh yeah, I, I should have included that. Yeah. Postgrad hymn researcher. Oof. No, but I used to be a hymn study member, or no. I'll give you a couple more seconds to participate. So I've got a few people who need to click. Although these are very optional polls. So all right. The good news is that no one is not sure. <laughs> Well, hey, if you're not a Hymn Society member, um, one of the reasons that this webinar is free is because our members, um, the membership dues go to support things like this. Um, and uh, and our donors, our, our members are also very generous uh, donors and they support things like this so that not only Hymn Society members, but everyone can take advantage of the re as many resources as we can uh, possibly make free, we do. Um, for the benefit of the church and all of you and the good work that you're doing. So with that, let me introduce our presenter today. You're, you're attending uh, Black Hymnody Matters, the music and ministry of Charles Albert Tinley, Charles Price Jones, and Margaret Pleasant Durow. And this is a presentation by Jocelyn Henderson uh, as a part of the Ambassadors webinar series. When the Ambassadors program started, and until COVID hit, these were in-person workshops that we were offering at colleges and universities and seminaries across the U.S. and Canada. And this is the specific presentation that Jocelyn uh, crafted for this ambassador series. But since we can't go places right now, 
all of the ambassadors, including Jocelyn, have agreed to do this webinar series uh, as, as part of their work to spread the love of congregational song and the knowledge of congregational song. Jocelyn is soon to be graduating from Baylor University and Truett Seminary uh, with a dual degree, uh, a MDiv, Masters of Divinity, and a Masters in Music in Church Music. So uh, if you know anything about Baylor, uh, they've got a lot going on. They have a full seminary with church music stuff going on, but they also have a school of music with church music. And Jocelyn's been riding both those waves and doing her thing in Waco, but has recently moved to Atlanta. And so that's where uh, Jocelyn is hailing from. And so Jocelyn, take it away. Thanks for being here. Absolutely. First of all, thank you to the Hymn Society and to the Center for Congregational Song for always opening the door and um, letting me come and talk and sing and do all the things. Brian really is the plug. I've been saying it for years. It is Brian who is the reason for so many, so many, so many things. But yes, let's get started. Um, this is Black Kennedy Matters. Of course, Black Lives Matter has uh, come to the scene as of the last year. Um, let me take that back. Black Lives Matter has become a uh, global phenomenon as of the past year. Um, no thanks to uh, many, many Black unarmed people being shot and killed and that coming to the forefront and protests and things happening. Um, I named this webinar, uh, webinar slash presentation Black Hymnody Matters. Um, Jennifer says, we're seeing it in presenter view. Oh, everyone's seeing it in presenter view. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so I named this uh, presentation Black Hymnody Matters back in 2018, 19, and um, was just, that's it. All right. I named this presentation Black Hymnody Matters because I study Hymnody and I am very fascinated with and um, very much ingrained in a Black uh, Hymnody type background. And that's who I am as a person, preacher's kid, um, ingrained in this music through and through. So Let's start with um, who is known to be one of the founding fathers of Black Hymnody. That is Reverend Charles Albert Tinley. Much better, yes. Um, <laughs> uh, Reverend Charles Albert Tinley was born into chattel slavery. Next slide, please, thank you. Um, <laughs> Reverend Charles Albert Tinley was born into chattel slavery around July 7th, 1851. And of course it's around because there's no, um, uh true like true information about it but around july 7th in 1851 uh, both of his parents worked at the same plantation in in maryland and they were allowed to marry uh, he was born um, into slavery and his mother passed away at two years old so in order to take care of the family um charles who was named after his father was uh, hired out at about five years old to do various odd tasks around Maryland. Um, he had a penchant for learning and uh, he would walk around the city gathering pine cones, uh, pine, pine sticks and needles and, and light them at night and read with little pieces of newspaper um, at night, depending on where he was. He would be hired out to people and some of the people were nice and some were rather cool, but every night he would go home and use that pine knot to uh, light his little uh, newspaper so he could read under the light. So by the time he was 17, he learned to spell the word cat, 17. Um, he was called the boy with the bare feet. If you can see on the slide, early life and upbringing, the boy with the bare feet. While he, one Sunday he woke up and decided he's gonna go to church. This is gonna be the Sunday that he goes to church. He was a young, uh, young man in his teen, teenage years. Of course, he had learned to read later on in life. He did not have the privilege of having a formal education and nor was he a church attender, church goer. He 
brought himself to his father's church, took one of his dad's uh, shirts. While, while he was walking to the church, he looked down and saw that his bare feet were dirty. So he stopped uh, and cleaned his feet off in a ditch somewhere near the church and then came on into the inside. During the church, while church was happening, during the service, while church was happening, he chose to sit up into the, in the balcony. But while church was going on, uh, someone at the front asked for a volunteer to read scripture. Um, he raised his hand, volunteered, came down the center aisle, and everyone was looking like, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. He was a tall, gangly man. Um, he came down to the front, and he read the scripture and returned to his seat. And people were talking about the boy with the bare feet who came up to read the scripture that day. Um, he traveled 14 miles to and from in order to get his lesson. Uh, he met and wed his wife, Anna Daisy, as a teenager. And um, of course, supporting a large family, he went on to have eight children, but supporting a large family, he needed to find work. So he ended up uh, being a janitor at Bainsbridge Methodist Episcopal Church. Well, Bainsbridge Methodist Episcopal Church um, would later become the church that he would pastor. He uh, adopted a slogan early on in his life that he would, quote, learn at least one new thing, a thing he did not know the day before each day. And he continued on in that way up until his death in 1933. He took correspondence courses in Greek and um, Hebrew at Boston University, what is now known as Boston University School of Theology. So he was self-taught in, in the finest institutions. And in 1885, he was admitted as probationer in the Delaware Conference of the Methodist Episcopal Church. The story is told that he went to go do the uh, sit for the test. And everyone in the room was seminary educated, seminary trained. These are Yale and Harvard. Um, seminary graduate, and uh, he was the one in the room who had taken a couple courses at Boston University, and he was admitted to this board, and everyone was in awe. So in 1902, he was asked to pastor East Calvary Methodist Episcopal Church, which was Bainsbridge Methodist Episcopal Church, where he began as a janitor. He uh, was known as a um, tall, a gentle giant, but I always say that he was a civil rights leader before there was ever vocabulary to describe such, right? Uh, the church, um, East Calvary Methodist Episcopal, yeah, East Calvary Methodist Episcopal uh, was on a very popular street in Philadelphia, Broad Street. It was the first black Baptist church to be on Broad Street and the way that he lived his life was through um, phenomenal preaching. He's known as the Prince of Preachers, through phenomenal preaching and doing for his people and his community and his church. Um, at, I was gonna say Bainsbridge, same place. At East Calvary, they would do a food drive and a coat drive every year. And people would line the street of Broad Street, all up and down Broad Street to come and hear the word, to get the food and to get a coat and to just be fed in multiple ways by um, Reverend Finley. He's one of the founding fathers of Black Hymnody as we know him. And he wrote over 40 hymns, many of which are still in use today. Next slide. So one of his songs is Leave It There. I had the privilege of taking part in the uh, Pruitt Symposium back in 2014 at Baylor and Dr. James Abington came. Dr. James Abington is one of the Hymn Society fellows. So of course you all would know who he is. He came and uh, led a hymn sing over in uh, Roxy Grove Hall. And this video that I'm about to show you is him playing Leave It There and me singing along to Leave It There. <laughs> so do enjoy.
It's coming. Um, this is the part where you get out your hymnals. So there's, I mean, there are hymnals, of course, but we sent out a, a handout earlier that um, that has all of the music that we're going to talk about in this session today. This song that we're going to sing together, but like not quite sing together. This song that we're going to sing together is uh, We'll Understand It Better By and By. One that we all, some of us, a lot of us, know and love um, in our churches will understand it better by and by. Honestly, that could be applied to this moment in history. Right now, it seems a little dreary, uh, but we'll understand it better by and by. Um, we're singing together, but from our homes. So I can't hear you, but I know you're singing with me. Amen. <clears throat> And we sing all the verses. That's the lesson that Dr. Abington taught me. <laughs> we are often tossed and driven on the restless sea of time. Somber skies and howling tempests all succeed a bright sunshine. In that land of perfect day, when the mists have rolled away, we will understand it better. By and by, maybe let's see. We are often destitute of the things that life demands. Want of shelter and of food, thirsty hills and barren lands. We are trusting in the Lord and according to God's word. We will understand it better by and by. Oh, 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 by and by. When the morning comes, all the saints of God are gathered home. We will tell the story how we've overcome. Or we'll understand it better by and by. Oh, trials dark on every hand, and we cannot understand all the ways that God would lead us to that blessed promised land. But He guides us with His love. I and we'll follow till we die, or we'll understand it better by and by. Oh, 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 oh by and by, when the morning comes, all the saints of God are gathered home. We will tell the story how we've overcome for we'll understand it better by and by oh temptation pit and snare often take us unaware and our hearts are made to bleed for some thoughtless word or deed and we wonder why the test when we try to do our best, but we'll understand it better by and by. Oh, by and by, when the morning comes, all the saints of God are gathered home. We will tell the story of how we've overcome 
Boy, we'll understand it better by and by. Oh, 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 oh. by and by, when the morning comes, all the saints of God are gathered home. We will tell the story of how we've overcome. Or we'll understand it better by and by. Amen. Our next hymn writer, preacher, theologian, person is that of Charles Price Jones, C.P. Jones. He's going to be coming up in, on the screen very soon. C.P. Jones. was born on December 9th, 1865 to a 14-year-old slave girl and the 18-year-old son of her slave master. There we go. Um, he learned to read and write as a young boy despite his mother's lack of formal education. Um, his mother, Mary Jones, he, he tells the story of how his mother would pray so fervently at night that he would wake up out of his sleep. <laughs> if she prayed um, at night that C.P. Charles Price Jones, he's known as C.P. Jones, would come to know God the way that she did. Um, Mary Jones had the largest impact on C. Uh, impact on C.P. Jones even after her death in 1882. Um, after she passed away, he moved to Chattanooga, Tennessee, and then from Chattanooga to Memphis, Tennessee, and then. Uh, landed in Cat Island, Arkansas. He, uh, he was baptized and began teaching Sunday school the same day. He was baptized and then he came uh, to teach Sunday school that same day. Three years after his mother passed away, he accepted his call to preach. Um, he, let me, one second. Okay, okay. Um, C.P. Jones's walk with the Lord uh, didn't begin until he was an adult. He did not grow up in the church. Although his mother was saved and tried to instill that in him, he didn't grow up in the church. So um, he was baptized and began teaching Sunday school at Locust Grove Baptist Church. And then in 1885, he accepted his call to preach. He served at that Locust Grove Baptist Church for two years as the clerk and was called a radical conscientious Baptist. Um, <laughs> despite his views on, on multiple things, he remained a part of uh, that church for years. And uh, the series of, of events that took place in a small Baptist church in Jackson, Tennessee, some uh, ways away from where he was at Locust Grove. Uh, the series of events that took place in that small Baptist church in Tennessee firmly situate Elder Price Jones in church history across three denominations. In 1895, uh, C.P. Jones became the pastor of Mount Helm Baptist Church. Two years into the pastorate at Mount Helm, uh, C.P. Jones held the inaugural holiness convention at his Baptist church and began publishing a holiness periodical called The Truth. One of the members of the church uh, uh, published an editorial challenge to his periodical and uh, warned the state convention about C.P. Jones teaching an entirely new religion at Mount Helm. In 1898, Jones had the church to vote to change the name of Mount Helm to a more scriptural name, citing that uh, a Baptist, there was no Baptist church in the Bible other than the one intended by John the Baptist. So he wanted the church to be named uh, Mount Helm Church of Christ. After three years of being in the court, Jones won uh, that lawsuit 
but the decision was reversed in the Mississippi Supreme Court. He ended up being put out of Mount Helm Baptist Church, as you might guess, because he did a whole periodical <laughs> and did a whole convention for a religion that was not Baptist, right? So he ended up being put out of Mount Helm Baptist Church and bought a land lot within two weeks time to uh, build a new church, Christ Tabernacle. That church opened its doors 10 months after, after the purchase of the land. But unfortunately, a couple of years later in 1905, Christ Tabernacle was burned to the ground by a white mob that was saying to have been following a black man who um, was said to have raped a woman. And the share, although there were firefighters out there, the sheriffs would not let them put the fire out. So that was the church on fire. The governor and the police wouldn't allow the fire to be extinguished. The next year, however, Christ Temple was built. Christ Temple stands to this day in Jackson, Mississippi as the headquarters for the Church of Christ Holiness USA and as a monument to the ministry of Reverend C.P. Jones. If you know anything about um, Kojic history, you know of Charles Harrison Mason, C.H. Mason, and he were good friends. Um, they met in 1895 and while they were both serving in the Baptist church. Um, they have been called, they said that they were called to personal holiness and sanctification, saying that they have been baptized in the Holy Spirit. So they were kicked out of the National Baptist Convention and that was prior to him being kicked out of Mount Helm. They were kicked out of the National Baptist Convention and started their own church, however, um, C.P. Jones and Charles Harrison Mason disagreed about glossolalia, speaking in tongues. So therefore, the Church of Christ Holiness USA was formed. Um, C.P. Jones is known as the first black man to write and publish a hymn book. Those of us who are aware of uh, black Kennedy at the very least, but Kennedy in general know that uh, the AME Pocket Hymn Book came out prior to C.P. Jones publishing his hymn book. However, C.P. Jones was the first Black man to publish his own hymn, hymn book, right? He was self-published. So he, though the AME Church published the pocket hymn book, he published his own books. Um, he published Jesus Only, Numbers 1 and 2, and went on to publish many hymn books after that one. So C.P. Jones is firmly situated in in three, um, three denominations history, but much of the music of the Church of Christ Holiness USA is um, to thank uh, Charles Price Jones. It is his writing and his music. The next slide, please. In, in, he tells the story of how in 1894, as he was pastoring in Selma, Alabama, he was under the weight of the ministry and the spirit spoke to him and said these words. The spirit spoke from within the holies of holies of my redeemed spirit and said, you shall write the hymns for your people. This he said six or seven times till it was fixed in my mind. I got up and went to the organ in the corner of the room wrote a song titled Praise the Lord, ruled off the tablet, set it to music, and sang it before I left the room. So his music still lives on today, of course. Um, and we're going to see a video of two of one song that he wrote. Um, what's interesting about this, as you could tell and, and told from the first song, um, this music is notated, but in a Black gospel tradition, the words and the music is on the paper, and sometimes we deviate from that. So um, in this video, this first video, this is Come Unto Me by Charles Price Jones, but this first video is playing it as it would from the score. Come unto me, I will give you rest, take my yoke upon me. Hear me and be blessed and, and do enjoy this video from Calvin Symposium a couple of years ago. Um, that's what we'll see now. Bring me every care. Oh, they sing. Oh, they give a 
where? Now, Kojic had to put a little Kojic sauce on it. <laughs> and every now and then, they had to do a little something less with that rhythm. They had to do sometimes even with the melody. So, oh, wasn't so that supposed to be the interval of a third? Or was that the interval? They said, no, you get the three, three, one, 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 and Jesus. We <laughs> 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 I'm already shouted. I'm still trying to do a Shakespeare and analysis of it. We're not ready. So this piece will sound a little bit like We're not ready. The second video is the same, the same place, the same setting. It's just we've gotten into it quite a bit. And in this second video, you'll hear the uh, organist uh, minister, minister Michael Jordan on the um, organ killing. I just feel like you should hear and see that. This is come unto me uh, again. Example is deeper, deeper, and um, that's a good one to uh, know C.P. Jones by. I'm very fascinated by uh, Come Unto Me and I Will Make the Darkness Light, but I am really excited to get us to, to Dr. Margaret Pleasant Duroux. So we won't, we won't sing, Brian. We won't sing this one. Yeah. All right. Dr. Margaret Pleasant Duroux is our living legend of tonight. She happens to still be with us. We are in presenter mode in presenter mode again. Dr. Duroux is the daughter of the late Reverend Earl A. Pleasant and Mrs. Olga Pleasant. She was educated in the Los Angeles public school system. She attended Southern University 
and obtained her Bachelor of Arts de degree at California State University, Los Angeles. She also earned a Master of Science degree, obtained teaching credentials, and an advanced master's degree at USC, the University of Southern California. Her PhD was uh, earned at the University of Beverly Hills in education. She was a preacher's kid, like myself. Um, her father was a gospel singer, and he was also a Black preacher. So she had the uh, privilege of growing up around and hearing um, gospel singers and artists who would come to their church, Mount Moriah in LA. She uh, grew up and uh, com began composing many gospel music renditions. Of course, we're talking about Black Hymnody, but it would be narrow to consider him to be just um, prolific, same, you know, to to content, to think of him to be as narrow. So, although she writes black gospel music, her songs are just as much hymns as anyone else's. So, she founded the Heritage Music Foundation, and she is the founder and CEO of the Heritage Music Foundation, which still is in existence today. And I put at the bottom, the rest is still unwritten because she's still, you know, living um, with us and among us. And uh, the, the last two songs that we will do will be by uh, Dr. Pleasant Duro. Um, I'm a, I love music that you can sing that doesn't necessarily have to have uh, an accompaniment. Give Me a Clean Heart is one of those, if you've ever, um, had anyone sing it at your church or, or done it for an offertory or something. It's such a beautiful song. Um, I'll, we'll sing the verses, the, the verses of Give Me a Clean Heart, not quite the refrain because it needs some harmony, but um, let me see. I don't, you all might not have the verses. <clears throat> let me what we have that's all right we'll sing the we'll sing the entire song so we'll sing the uh, chorus together and i'll sing the verses um yeah okay give me a clean heart so i may serve Lord, fix my heart so that I may be used by Thee, for I'm not worthy of all these blessings. Give me a clean heart, and I'll follow thee. Oh, give me a clean heart, so I may Lord, fix my heart so that I may be used by thee, for I'm not worthy of all these No, my. 
my name. But Lord, please give me a clean heart and I'll follow thee. Give me a clean heart and I'll follow thee. Everyone together, we're singing this. <laughs> give me a clean heart so I may serve thee. Lord, fix my heart so that I may be used by thee. For I'm not worthy of all these blessings. Give me a clean heart and I'll follow thee. The last song we're going to do together before our Q&A and before our time ends is One More Day. This is a song of thanksgiving. Someone asked in the um, chat what hymnal these hymns are found, are published in. They're published in a series of hymnals, but the ones that we're showing you are from the latest, I was going to get up and get it, that's too much, <laughs> the latest um, African-American ecumenical hymnal that's, that was published and edited by Dr. Jimmy Abington, one of the Hymn Society fellows. Um, he led the board of uh, at least one person from the major mainline um, denominations of the Black church. And it, it has come together quite, quite greatly. It's a wonderful resource. And if you want to go purchase it, go on to GIA.com and um, get you one. But this is these, all of this music is found in One Lord, One Faith, One Baptism hymnal by GIA. The last song we're doing is a song of thanksgiving by Margaret Pleasant D. Rose. Um, it's called One More Day. I like to use this one as a benediction, even though we're not quite benedicting. You know what? I'm going to save this. So <laughs> I'll save this for after the Q&A part. Um, I'm not sure if we've already got some questions, but uh, we're open now for questions and answers. There is a question. Anonymous attendee <laughs> says, what might explain the strong retardando at the end of each congregational song in many black churches? I think there was a lot to be said about the each in the question. Maybe a bit of a micro. Um, but the, the strong <laughs> retardando, um, we like to uh, repeat things. And sometimes things are drilled in down deeper and better by doing it over and over. And when we end songs, we want that final phrase to be important. Also, by the way, the bathroom is being renovated. I meant to say that at the beginning, but the bathroom is being renovated. So you might hear a couple of things in the background or have heard a couple of things in the background. But um, so that, that, uh, that strong retardando at the end is to, to um, let the song breathe. Thank God for it. Brian, you look like you had something to say. <laughs> uh, I, I was just wondering, uh, from a historical standpoint, if it had anything to do with the connection to um, lining out hymns, in that if you're lining something out, then the last time you line something out, because it's a long process, you, you need some sort of strong signifier like, all right, this is the last one. Um, and then I was thinking about performance practice and I wondered would it have something to do with the heavy conversational style between the vocalist and the, and the instrumentalist and so in order to have that final conversation you have to give 
everyone kind of has more time to say their piece to get there to get to the end and 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 finally um say that last thing yeah all of those are good questions i'm there may not be an answer. That's the <laughs> that's the great thing about um, theology, about music, about a lot of these things. Is that is that there are questions. There aren't always answers. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but I'm I'm grateful for the questions. Yeah, it's a it's something to ponder. Another question that has come in: What is your favorite Duro hymn and why? Ooh, my favorite. Duro him, uh, what shall I render? What shall I render? What shall I give? God has everything and everything belongs to God. Yeah, my favorite Duro him. I thought someone was going to ask my favorite Black him just in general. And that one is, um, no one asked, but that one is, um, uh, of course, I would forget while I'm, while I'm saying it. Um, it's the one about, um, I'm remembering it. Uh, da, 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 da. Yes, God is Real <clears throat> by Jimmy Dow. There are some things I may not know. There are some places I may not go, but I am sure of this one thing that God is real and I can feel God within. Yes, God is real, real in my soul. Yes, God is real, for God has washed and made me whole. His love for me is just like pure gold. Yes, God is real, for I can feel God in my soul. I love that one. Yeah. No one asked, but I answered. <laughs> sure someone was wondering. I'm, I'm sure. I get that I get that question sometimes. People are like, what's your favorite <laughs> hymn? I'm like, good Lord. Um, <laughs> They would it's because we're affiliated with the Hymn Society, so you must love him. You must have a yes. favorite. Um, you must have a favorite. Michael Hahn pointed out in the chat that the complete Give Me a Clean Heart with stanzas is in Songs of Zion, which I believe is the United Methodist uh collection. Mm-hmm. Uh but most hymnals nice. only have the refrain. Ooh. Thank you, Dr. Hahn, for being here and for answering. <laughs> <Great> <laughs> Somebody asked. <laughs> Uh, mm-hmm. have you had a chance to meet Duro? That's a good question. Let me tell you, I was in the room with her and I thought it would be a little strange to be a fan girl and run up to her and be like, Oh my God, I love you so much. But, um, I happened to be in Dallas for the national convention of gospel choirs and choruses in CGCC started by Thomas Dorsey. If you haven't seen Say Amen, somebody, that is like the uh, history of the NCGCC and talks a bit about Thomas Dorsey and some early, early Black hymnody stuff. Go watch it if you can, just side note. But yeah, I happened to be in the same room as her and she was like walking down the aisle and I was trying to get to her and my people were like, Jocelyn, I need you to chill. It's too much. <laughs> but if we have... <clears throat> We'll talk about that in the evening tonight. Um, but if we have a way to get her to some, to some hymn society things, that would be great. I haven't had the chance to meet her yet, but I'm a, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. She's our living legend. She's older, but um, she's, she's sharp. Mm-hmm. She's sharp. Like Alice Barker. Just going to keep on going and leading and yeah. Yeah. never stop. Yes, and never stop. Amen. Um, I have a question for you, and then it looks like the, that's all of the questions in the Q and A. Um, so then maybe we'll sing our way out. Um, my question is, uh, one of the things that I love about this presentation, and that I I that I pride myself on on behalf of the Center for Congregational Song is that we we understand that everyone's on a journey. And mm-hmm. that this is a good this is a good starting place. If you didn't know anything about black church music or any of these hymn writers that we've learned about today, this is a great place to start. And and then our job is then to help people along that journey, right? What else yeah. can we what where else can we go? So that's my mm-hmm. question to you is 
Um, let's say this is the first time they've heard of these three people. Where else should they go uh, to learn more? Well, I did a version of this presentation last summer with First Baptist Church Austin, and they have published a resource of lists, uh, of lists. They've published a resource, a list of, um, a list of sources. I'm going to put the link to that because there's a, a larger link that is to the like presentation itself, but there's also a list of like additional sources and it has on it the, um, I'm sending this link, hopefully this works, I'm sending it, let me see, to all panelists and attendees. It has, <clears throat> it has the, the book, it has the book on Black Hymnody, which is Black Hymnody, a hymnological account of like, uh, a hymnological account of denominations in the Black church. I'm not sure I have the name right, but it's the book on Black Hymnody by John Michael Spencer, who is now known, um, who was professionally known as John Michael Spencer, who is now known by a different name. I don't have that name in front of me, but um, he wrote the book. So if you're looking for a book, that's the book. But that link that I just sent you has a, a, a list of sources and resources that you can look to. That's a great question. Um, it's, it's the one that if you're presenting on anything, you should have an answer to. How do I find out, find out, find out more about this thing? Also, um, get involved in some local organizations that, well, there's a whole pandemic outside. Well, maybe it's not as easy as it. <laughs> <laughs> Join the Hymn Society and, and look at the things that we're doing. That's Wait, it. we got another question. All okay. right, and this this will be the last one, and then then we'll okay. sing our way out. Because I, yeah, this we'll is a great it. question. There's going to be uh, a PBS special called "The Black Church." This is our story. This is our song, hosted by Dr. Henry uh, Louis uh, yes. Gates Jr. Uh, have you heard anything about this series? I have not, which I don't know. I don't know what that means. This is our story. This is our song. I don't know that it's more focused on black preaching or black. I think I saw music. a promo for it. I th I think it's about the song of the, the black whole, church. Okay. Like yeah, like it's a it's a, it's very music music centric. I think. Um, okay. But I'd have to check it out. What. Well, well, check that's a out, shameless folks. plug for it. We'll all check it out. We'll all check it out. Way to go, PBS. PBS. Come on, PBS. We love to see it. Okay. So, like I said, we're going to um, sing our way out of here. And I think it's most appropriate for us to end with one more day because we thank God just for one more day. Um, here we go. This is one more day. It's in the music supplement. It's the second to last one. And, and before we sing, I just want to say thank you okay. so much for this presentation. Uh, and you. I'm so glad that you did it. And I hope everyone learned uh, a lot about these three important figures and you have a place to continue uh, learning and, and uh, celebrating the music of the Black Church. So here we go. Yes, indeed. This is, this is our prayer this day. One more day. This is how we're leaving and how we're thanking God today. One more day, one more day, I thank God just for one more day, one more day, the Lord has made a way. God, just for one more day, one more time, one more day, one more day, I thank God just for one more day, one more day the Lord has made a way I thank God just for one more day Lord one more chance one more chance 
God for one more chance. Thank you, God, for one more opportunity to tell you thank you in public. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. 